Hi guys, thanks for watching again. Uh, this is a quick follow-up video to the last video I made back in January, where I talked about learning full stack web development in 2017, and this is just an update, I guess, about where I am now. So as a quick caveat to this video, um, I'm gonna be talking about the situation here in Israel. It's a little bit different to how it is in the US and Europe, but I still think the main themes of the video are pretty much the same, regardless of where you're looking for a job. A lot of times you'll see a video of somebody saying, or writing an article saying that, you know, I did a boot camp and now I got hired as a full stack developer. And usually the outcome is, well, I did some networking and I got hired. I got my first job as a developer through a job board. So I wanted to make a video and say it is possible to do it another way. In 2015, I started to you know, really take an interest in web development. And then halfway through 2016, I actually started to learn it at a college called John Bryce in Tel Aviv. The best way to explain it, it's kind of like a technical college or more like a boot camp really for people who have no technical background that want to jump into the high-tech industry. Most of the time there on the course was spent learning HTML, CSS, JavaScript, AngularJS, Node.js, and PHP, you know, with a few other things like MySQL and MongoDB thrown in there, so you really get a full stack look at web development. Now, obviously, doing, you know, classes two times a week um, isn't necessary enough to get your first job. My Recommendation would be if you have homework, really just get on and do the homework and also just start working on personal projects. And this is a really good way to get your name out there, get your ideas out there and start practicing programming in realistic terms. So if you look at the job market here in Israel specifically, um, there's an aggregator site called Mapped in Israel that currently has listed 1,765 startups, just startups here in Israel. So there's obviously a lot of work going around. I think there's a reason why. See, most companies nowadays need a portal for their users or their customers to connect to their product that they're using, whether it be an app, uh, a service, software as a service, an internet of things device. You still need a way for a user or customer to come in and log into their account, uh, tinker with settings, um, you still need a way for maybe customers to sign up, a landing page. And the way I see a lot of this is still done through a web portal, be it a standalone website or a uh, single page application. If you look at Glassdoor, the salaries in Israel, I don't really know how they compare to the rest of the world, but just to give you a bit of an idea, a junior developer with no experience or two years experience is usually looking at a salary of between eight to 10,000 shekels. A mid-level developer usually bumps up to 15 to 20,000 shekels a month, which is, you know, two to four years experience. A senior developer can be from anywhere from 25 plus. It's usually with about four or five years experience. To put those figures into dollars, a junior is usually on around $32,000 a year. A mid-level developer will probably be on around $65,000 a year. And a senior developer will probably be on around $100,000 a year plus. So looking for opportunities, obviously there's a lot of companies out there hiring. The salaries are really good on Israeli terms. Obviously the little ampersand here is that most of the job posts that I've seen out there are from mid or senior level positions. There also tends to be the age old catch of you need a job to get experience, but you need experience to get a job with junior positions. At the point that I started looking for a job, I had five months of experience of actually learning full stack web development that I you know, could write on a CV. So obviously I wasn't coming into the job search with the strongest hand. But what I did do to help me stand out was I opened a GitHub profile, I put all my personal projects on there, I started setting time aside to actually work on personal projects, I threw together a website which sort of acted as a gallery for these projects that also kind of hosted live demos of them so you could go in and use them and get a better idea of what they were. I decided to mostly look for front-end developer roles as I read once upon a time as I was starting to study when you're at the beginning of your career don't be a jack of all trades, like don't go after full stack positions, even if that's what you're learning. Try and focus on one technology and really stick with it until you get a bit more experience in industry. That all being said, having a good working knowledge of Node.js, uh, PHP, server side technology and how databases work really does help. And it came up a lot in interviews if I knew that kind of stuff. Because today's modern age, you really need to know, even if you're not programming a database, you need to know how the data is going to get to you or in what format it's going to come or in what format the database is held. So it's good to know this kind of information. So my lecturer at John Bryce gave us a great piece of advice about putting together a CV or a resume. Basically said two things. Number one, if you've worked anywhere in the past which in any way related to tech, be it tech support even, if you can sit and talk about having a problem and the steps you took to solve it, then that's great. 
He also said if you've done personal projects, just list off personal projects and the technologies used. Everything else is kind of fluff. I also linked at the top of my CV, sort of the first thing you see after my name is the link to my personal website, my GitHub profile, and my LinkedIn profile. So now I've got a bit of experience, I've got a CV together, let's go and start looking for a job. So here in Israel, there's two main sort of job websites. It's called All Jobs and Jushim. Um, they're sort of the big daddies when it comes to companies posting uh, just general job roles out there. Facebook in Israel is also a really strong place for finding a job. There's lots of groups for job seekers where HR people will generally post job roles there. So if you know how to use the search feature and you can sign like tailor it a little bit, you can also find a good number of roles on Facebook. The two ways of actually going about this, like if you're sending through a job website, most of the time you're sending through an automated system that's gonna read your CV and it's gonna get to somebody's inbox. What I liked about sending job roles through Facebook is that you're actually most of the time here at least sending it to someone's direct email address. So it really allows you to do a follow up a couple of days after you've sent the CV to check if they've received it, if they've seen it, and it also gives you a great idea really quickly if they're not interested in you, they can just say no and you can sort of mark that off your list and move on to the next thing. So I was looking for junior positions. Now, most of the times they aren't listed as a junior position, but if you look and it says between one to two years experience, that usually is a junior position. You can send your CV off to that. You know, you might get some feedback, you might get a direct note, or you might get through to the next stage, but that's kind of the read between the lines way of looking at. Most companies don't want to openly advertise they're looking for junior roles because they'll get flooded with CVs. So now to get into the numbers, in, in the case of full disclosure, I throughout my job hunt sent out 67 CVs uh, as a mix of just job boards, um, jobs I found on Facebook and jobs I found on LinkedIn. Of those 67 CVs that I sent out, I got six responses. <laughs> of those six responses, I had four follow-up phone interviews. So of those four phone interviews, most of them actually came through when I was at work. So it was kind of a bit taken aback that I was getting a phone call at work, so I had to run off and find a quiet corner to uh, sort of speak to the HR person that was giving me a call. Most of those calls consisted of just a quick introduction of who they were, what the company was, and just to get a bit of a better idea of who I am and just see if I can have a conversation. One of the calls I got was from a team leader who he really dove into my JavaScript and jQuery knowledge. Um, really wanted to you know, drive down the technical side of things. The first interview I had was a complete disaster. It was with the same guy that had called me up and really drilled down about my JavaScript and jQuery over the phone. Um, let's just say I got to the office about 10 minutes early but this being Israel, I sat in their kitchenette with a coffee for another half an hour. But luckily they're on like the 18th floor of a brand new building, so the view was great. So in that first interview that I went to, I sat down with the team leader that had called me on the phone and really asked me a lot about jQuery and JavaScript. And I sat with another team leader from a different department. I sat with them for about 40 minutes and we really went through technical knowledge and technical questions. And they also asked me a lot about personal projects that I'd done. So I wanna come back to this again, like doing personal projects, it really allowed me to sit there for like, I think I spoke about a couple of projects for about 10 minutes that I'd done. Um, it really allowed me to drill down and open up my knowledge. And it also gave me a way to sort of say how I'd done things, my way of thinking about how I went and put a project together. So after that interview, they sat me down and said, okay, do you have time to do a, a technical test? I was like, yeah, sure, fine. Uh, I opened up their computer and there was a list of three questions that I needed solved and I had 90 minutes to do it. I think I sat there for most of the time on Stack Overflow trying to find out how to do the questions that I've been asked and writing some actually atrocious code. The team leader came back in at the end. We sat together, talked a bit about my code. He read through it and then uh, on the way out of the office, he gave me the old, oh, you know, we're still interviewing other people, but we'll be in touch. About two weeks later, I got a nice copy and paste email saying, thanks, but we found somebody else to fill the role. I wasn't disappointed though, I was actually very happy. I'd had my first uh, real interview for a developer position at this point with five months experience. I really learned what my level was and what my expectations should be from here on out looking forward. I then had another couple of uneventful interviews, either for companies that didn't really look that good to me, that I didn't really like the product they were working on, or just the job role wasn't the right fit for me. I then got another phone call from an HR person saying they'd got my CV and they'd like to call me in for an interview. Um, I went in, again, not really expecting much, did my background on the company, did, you know, just went over JavaScript. I didn't really know what to expect going in. 
Uh, it was actually a really quick face-to-face -face interview with the team leader who asked me if I had time the next day to sit down and do a test at home. So we organized the time, he sent me through the test, I had three hours to get it finished and I emailed it back off at the end of that three hour period and I just sat back and waited really. I think about two weeks went by after I sent it off. Again, I didn't hear anything back so I kind of just figured, okay, it's gone, you know, no harm, no foul, we'll just keep going and keep looking for the next opportunity. Uh, then I got a call from the HR there saying, hey, you know, the test was really good. They'd like to call you in for a second interview. The second interview again was an absolute disaster. I sat with a VP of production there who was asking me questions, you know, of some of it as a computer science graduate. I should know the answer to this stuff. I've done a boot camp. I like to think my knowledge is quite good, but I was very flustered, I think, by the questions that were being asked of me. Um, I said I don't know a lot. I was very truthful. Like if I was asked a question and I didn't know the answer, I was just like, look, I don't know. But if this was real world, then I would look on Stack Overflow or I'd search on Google to try and find the answer. Again, I think another week went by after that interview. I thought it went terribly. So I was really not expecting a callback, but they gave me a callback and I went to meet the HR and the chief architect of the company. So after the meeting with HR and the architect, I was actually offered the job and I'll be starting next week. So I've gone from zero to eight months later having a job as a front-end developer. Now I think it's important to just mention that, again, I didn't get this job through networking. This job actually came from a job that I just sent my application to, or I sent my CV to through a job board. Another thing that always came up a lot in the interviews was why I wanted a job as a front-end developer. You know, I wasn't doing tech in the army. I wasn't studying computer science. Like, why do it? I think one of the most important things that I gave across and that came across for me in the interview was passion and real passion for developing. Um, obviously, if you're not coming from an academic sphere, then you really have to come across and show that you love what you're doing and the love that you want to get into this industry and there's a reason why you want to get into this industry. My answer always was that I'd done programming as a bit of a hobby. I really wanted to turn it into a career. I really wanted to get into the high tech industry here in Israel because it's a growing industry. It's a safe job, so to speak. But it also gives me the skills essentially to work all over the world if I choose to one day. I think another thing that also leads into passion is if you can talk about personal projects. Like I can't say this enough. Open a GitHub profile look for tutorials on how to build this in JavaScript or how to build whatever programming language you're learning. Just build products. It doesn't matter if they're rubbish, if they don't look good, just as long as they work and you can talk about them, you can talk about the problem you were trying to solve or the issue that you came across while building it. If you can convey that you know what you're talking about and you can actually build something that somebody can use, that goes so far in an interview because it really shows your interviewer that you enjoy what you're wanting to do as a job. If I choose to sit at home in my free time and make a product, then that really shows that I'm gonna to wanna to do that at work as well. So obviously this is my first job, I haven't actually started yet, so I'll be making another video very soon once I've started and get into the swing of the job. But again, it's possible, you can do it. You don't need networking, you just need to be passionate about what you're studying and you will eventually get a job in the industry. Thanks for watching and see you next time.